Hey, g'day guys. It's Calvin from the Cartoon Company in New Zealand. I do a heap of 1UZ conversions and wiring and conversion related work, mainly focused on 1UZs. I've been doing this for a long time and I've built up a, a lot of knowledge and I'm sharing it with you so that a lot more people can have good information. And what it's done is it's taken the pressure off me in some ways. It means now a lot of people who contact me already have the knowledge and the information about what they are doing. And when I get questions that I haven't done a video on, it allows me to build up that library of information that we're putting together here. My mate Les with the Lancer, he asked me a question the other day about the fuel pressure regulators. And that was, are all the fuel pressure regulators the same? And I, I knew the answer to that. No, Gen 1 have got a small banjo fitting for their outlet. Gen 2s have a push on hose. So that bit was, that was easy. But then he said, can they be interchanged? I didn't know the answer. I thought they most likely would. However, I wasn't completely sure. Interest sparked, I now need to know. So in just a moment, we are going to look at that. But before we do, I'm going to show you a video of a guy I've been helping out, a race truck over in Las Vegas. I had to turn down the offer to travel to Las Vegas to wire it because it's a little bit far to commute. But he had his mechanic wire it using my information and it was great working with a professional who could ask good questions because he said it was just starting and stopping. I knew exactly what the problem was, which incorrect airflow meter. Pass the information on, and he's got it running. So let's have a quick look at that video. I'm definitely going to Las Vegas and having to ride in that truck, because that looks cool to me. I've had a build up of engines. Um, spear. This is interesting. See there, that's got the dipstick going into the head. It's got a different oil filter house than that matches with that. And exhaust manifolds don't match. And the trans doesn't match. But I'm fairly certain that that dipstick is a giveaway to what this engine should have been. It actually came with this sump here, which is not the match to the engine, but if we look down in there, it gives us another clue that it's a really early engine. Right, uh, so I, I spent, I sort of scored this setup, uh, four by four trans with an adapter plate. It's a Gen 2 engine, so it's perfect for looking at the fuel pressure regulator. So this is the Gen 2 regulator. It's located on the back of the cast fuel rails with a push-on fitting. Also note the throttle body here. There are different versions of this throttle body. This main port here, which runs through into vacuum in the throttle body, Normally runs around here to the VSV, 
the vacuum switching valve for the purge system, or the breather for the fuel tank. That's slightly different to old yellow here. Don't mind the coils, that's coming. There's the same sort of fitting. Again, this is a this is a Japanese JDM throttle body. Has the little matrix here for the vacuum system, but again, it goes round to that VSV for the purge. Another thing to note, really interesting on the throttle bodies, you US guys or the left-hand drive guys, the throttle cable pulls from this side. If you want to compare it, and I'd love to see some photos of the US ones, because I believe you'll find the throttle cable comes in and the throttle body pulls differently. I'm distracted again. So here is the fuel pressure regulator on the Gen 1 engine. They are on the billet fuel rails with the flat machine tops and the outlet is on a banjo fitting. Now can I put that one onto that engine and vice versa? We're going to have to find this out. So let's have a look. Um, I'm going to need some tools. Let's do some removing, see what happens. Oh, sorry, probably I stepped on you. Oh, good guy. Oh, yeah. Good guy. Good guy. Get that throttle body out of the way. And the return line. Return line isn't bolted on, so we're good there. Well, this is the slow way. I should have used my. Rattle gun. And I've dropped the washer down here. Washer retrieved. It's not making a good table like the VVTI. And here we go. So we've got a lock nut here which pulls this washer down onto this o-ring. Let's proceed to the Gen 2 engine. So the return line on the Gen 2 is a push-on fitting. I can feel that same o-ring in that seat. And I'm guessing the O-ring's actually sitting in the fuel rail at the moment. Come on, pop out. There it goes. I can feel that O-ring winding its way down. So, what does it do? And how does it work? Well, petrol goes in there. In here, there is a, a spring and a diaphragm. And basically, when the pressure exceeds a certain point, the excess fuel goes out that return line. It has vacuum on it. So when you apply, when you hmm, do the sucky thing, but sucky on the top, it allows, it, it decreases the, the spring pressure, the effect of the spring. Or if you put in you add pressure, if you add pressure like in a boosted situation, it increases the effectiveness of the spring. It adds to it, changing the amount of fuel pressure. So a fuel pressure regulator is designed to just compensate mechanically for that gap when you accelerate or when you put your foot, foot down that momentary delay helps with the acceleration enrichment and overall enrichment such in a boosted vehicle when you're putting a large amount of boost in it and it increases the fuel pressure, more pressure, more fuel.
There's also uh, different rates that it will increase fuel, but that's for another day. Let's keep it simple today. Do they fail? Yes. Do they fail often? Nah. I would say not really. I haven't changed that many of them. But if you ask me if I've got one, I don't think I've got many left. So over the years, I've seen a few fail, but it's not like a really, really common one for me. Ways in which they fail, hole in the diaphragm, raw fuel up the vacuum line, straight into the engine, seizing shut, so massive fuel pressure, lots of black smoke. Those are the two most common that I see. And as I said, not that frequently. And let's have a look here. So it's the same concept. Both have this locking nut here. That allows the fuel pressure regulator to be put into different positions. So we'll screw this one into here. Definitely the same thread. If you put the vacuum line there, the outlet is in a funny spot. But it does physically fit. And the Gen 2 oh, it screws in nice. So if, if we put the vacuum line in the correct rotation, the outlet is in completely the wrong location. So it would have to go like that. Again, don't look at the coils. That's another day. The result was exactly as I expected. They interchange, but those slight design differences possibly doesn't make it ideal. For some jobs though, the push-on one may be a good option. So a little bit longer vacuum hose wouldn't really matter. Wonder if it fails on the throttle body. Huh. One question answered and another one begins. Possibly not ideal. So if we drop that water line off, which I always do, here's one I prepared earlier, and then we rotated the fuel pressure rig, the fuel line could go along the top of the fuel rail just fine. Now where was I? Yes, the result was as I expected, but it's always nice to know these little details. I'm going to mention the VVTI as well. There is no fuel pressure regulator on the engine. They still have one. It's in the tank. So every now and again, I do get guys calling up saying, my VVTI engine is running really rich. And I ask what sort of fuel pressure regulator are they running? And they often have no knowledge of that. So just be aware, VVTI still need a fuel pressure regulator of some sort. I'm just going to keep this one as a quickie, because guys love a quickie in the morning. So I hope that was helpful, and we'll talk to you again soon. Catch you later.